Let's go south. All of you are actually going south. This is the direction of south. And if you go 11,000 kilometers out of the back of this room, you will be as south as anyone has ever been. I am not a polar explorer and I am definitely not a scientist. I am an environmentalist who has braved it out in the coldest, windiest, driest place on earth, the Antarctic. Now here are some dangerous photos I am going to show you. Photos which will make you realize what a hazardous world we live in. The ice melts from the north and South Pole. We need to listen to what these photos are telling us. I have seen the impending effects of climate change head on. And by far the scariest thing I have seen in my life is the melting of an iceberg. Very recently, I was invited and selected to be a lifelong member of the Climate Force Mission 2041 group, helmed by the legendary polar explorer Robert Swan. He happens to be the first man in history to have walked to both North and South Pole. The global mission of this community is to offset 360 million tons of CO2 by 2025. The idea is to create young leaders like you and me who will walk the talk in climate activism and create ripples of change in society, in energy, in lifestyle and in businesses. Antarctica is such a hopeful place. It is protected by the Antarctic Treaty, signed in 1959. In 1991, a 50-year agreement was entered into, which prohibits any kind of exploitation in Antarctica. This treaty is up for negotiation. It can be altered, it can be changed, it can even be abandoned starting year 2041. Arctic is already going through drilling for natural gas and oil. Imagine exploring and excavating a place which has been under ice cover for over 50, 100,000 years. With ice cover lower than 40% than average, by 2030 to 2050, we might not have any ice in the Arctic by the summer. Now, what is happening in Arctic up north, I hope really, really doesn't happen down south in the Antarctic. So, when did all of this begin for me? I spent three years of my college doing theatre, 365 days each year, waking up with a sense of purpose, of connecting with weaker sections of the society, bringing activism and awareness through theatre on pertinent social issues. These three years of my life were transformative. I didn't go to parties, I forgot from social gatherings because I was busy performing in some remote nookers in Delhi. People came to see our performances, they laughed, they cried, they learned. And what was the most rewarding thing is that I could connect with this section of society at such a meaningful level, at such an emotional level. As a teenager, I realized that I wanted to be a person who does good for people. There's something called sleeping well at night. I wanted to be a professional who made a difference in people's lives. Since then, uh, it's been an uphill ride. I did my master's in climate science and policy. I'm a foggy brat, so I've always had this innate love for the adventure, for the mountains and for nature. And my degree equipped me in understanding how is climate impacting glaciers, tundra region, wildlife, biosphere reserves. And post my education, I went on to working in a solar company on the frontiers of business sustainability. I hit the first crest in my life when I learned about the legendary Polar Explorer's mission and a chance to be amongst global leaders to accompany him on this mission. I applied, I went through three rigorous rounds of interview, 
And one of these days, I'm just passing time and uh, I see a call from an unknown Chennai number, landline number. And obviously, little did I know that that phone call is going to be a monumental phone call in my life. I hear a woman speak to me in calculated words ki, uh, Sunmay, we've received your application and we've gone through your profile. It looks really, really great. Your company is a leader in sustainability and I'm sure you're doing all these wonderful things to make it happen. We want to personally invite you to be a part of the International Antarctic Expedition. That one line and just post that phone call, I was so excited and I just knew that I was going. And I told myself, I declared to myself that no matter what happens, no matter if I have to pull the skies down, all hell breaks loose, I am going to be on that vessel that is going to Antarctica. Was that three months, I was just fueled with superhuman energies. Like, I was of course doing my routine job, I was training for this expedition, I was running full marathons, I was making hundreds of cold calls for sponsorship, I was researching three months of attempting to raise funds, three months of hearing no, three months every single day of my parents and my friends telling me that I needed help. There used to be days when I used to go and meet people and it would feel like I'm talking to a wall. And there are days in your life when you will have to pull out every single ounce of determination into your work. There will be days when the world will not believe what you say. There will be days when people will not be by your side. What I have learned is that in those days if you need to be successful, you have to believe in the power of your dream. No matter how crazy the world thinks it is. So for those three months, every single day, I lived with one principle. The principle is that if you want to achieve extraordinary things in your life, you need to make extraordinary efforts. And I did just that. When I finally had my breakthrough, I had my sponsorship check of 13 lakhs, my visa, my tickets, my gear, my invitation, and I was ready to embark on a journey of a lifetime. For all of you dreamers out there in this room, dreams big or small, if you can do or dream you can do, begin it now. For boldness has genius, magic and power in it. So yes, here I am sailing towards the seventh continent, each and every nautical mile taking me further away from home. Here I am accompanied with 87 other legendary human beings from 25 different countries, 87 of us who became best friends out of this experience. Sometimes the experience in itself is so powerful that it binds you together for a lifetime. It is so powerful to be in a community of people, people like you and me, whose entire lives are about sustainability. It's about preaching sustainability. It's about doing wonderful things for the environment. We would be sitting together, working on solutions, understanding stories, creating plans for the future, working on understanding penguin colonies, continental shelves, going and sighting different whales and seals, and understanding more about the marine biology through the experts. So I want to, don't want to keep you wondering for way too long on how does one really get to Antarctica? I'm sure that question must have come across in a lot of your heads. So the journey to the end of the world is not an easy one. Uh, from here in Mumbai, from here where I live in Mumbai, I took a flight to Dubai. From Dubai, it went to Brazil. From Brazil, it went to Buenos Aires, which is in Argentina. 36 hours of air time, cold package food, no idea of what air zones, time zones mean like complete dehydration and I'm finally going to take my last flight out to the end of civilization which is called Ushuaia, the southernmost city of the world from where I embark on my journey to Antarctica. Now to reach the Antarctic Peninsula, one must cross the Drake's Passage. This is what the Drake's Passage looks like. 
Rake's passage makes the bravest men plead for mercy. Nothing makes you feel good. Not the smoothest wines, not the tastiest food would put you to sleep. Your ship is rolling and pitching and you're dancing to the music of the sea. You're on your own, guys. No radio communication, no backup. Beneath your feet is 90% of the entire world's ice. 70% of the entire world's fresh water. You're on it. That is the power of Antarctica. In this expedition, we face the dangers of crevices. Intense cold. So cold your sweat turns into ice. So cold the water in your eye freezes. So cold your skin bleeds and burns. And if somebody looking like that tells you that they're cold, they definitely are cold. Colder than you have ever been in your life. I want to share another great experience I've had from this nerve-wrecking adventure, which is of plunging into the Antarctic Sea. Yes, you heard it right. Surmai Kaushik of questionable sanity jumped into sub-zero freezing temperatures of the Antarctic Ocean while native penguins looked at me in amused puzzlement. So yeah, the ship makes the announcement that uh, participants are supposed to brace themselves mentally, physically and spiritually for this plunge. And I'm just preparing myself, okay, this is how I'm going to dive and somehow, you know, the knife biting cold is going to soothe my skin and all of the spiritual gyan I can give myself. Nothing at all prepares you for a polar plunge. Nothing at all in your life will prepare you for this. But you have to do it. You have to do it because it is a true testimony to realizing your adventure and embracing this journey. I jump in. I'm into the ocean now. I'm one amongst them. One amongst the seals, the penguins and the whales. In the landscape, there are just icebergs. Every single body that breathed in Antarctica filled me up with their stories. There is nothing more mesmerizing than seeing a whale breach out of water. Just imagine something weighing 40 tons springing out of water for no scientific reason whatsoever is the most awestruck worthy moment of your life. Whales are like an extension of the sea. They beautifully climb out and inspectfully go back in. We used to just be electrified and we used to fall in love with each of these creatures, the whales, the penguins, the seals, while we would be on our zodiac rides, on our continental shelves, we would just be around them. And it was, it was love at first sight. Climate change is disrupting this ecosystem. Seals, whales and penguins are facing the wrath of this climate. Temperatures have warmed. Antarctica happens to be a barometer for climate change. Since 1980, we've had a 6 degree rise in the past 20 years. Increased CO2 has caused our oceans to become more acidic. When the oceans get more acidic, the carbonates are lost. When the bicarbonates are lost, then it disrupts the corals, the planktons of this marine life. Imagine having found hazardous substances in microplastics in Antarctica, a place which has no cities, no ethnic group. Population of chinstrap penguins has reduced by more than 50%. This is happening because of an 80% decline in krill biomass. Krill is what the penguins, whales and seals eat and in turn the krill requires planktons for food. Overfishing is adding even more damage to the krill population. So every single activity that is happening from the human side is causing a chain reaction and a havoc in these ecosystems. The last white wilderness, the seventh continent is shrinking, shrinking at an alarming rate. 
the ice sheets are breaking and moving further away from the south. 14 desperate days in the most inhospitable place on earth. And I had realized a reality which was so close to myself but I still didn't know that it existed. The ice is melting, it's moving further away south. The world is in a survivor situation. And that feeling has never changed since then. The key to future sea level rise lies in Antarctica. And if we do nothing about it, it will lead to outcomes like this or like this. Now a survivor sees a problem and doesn't go whatever. A survivor sees a problem, takes charge of it, deals with it before it becomes a threat. We have 23 years to save Antarctica. Antarctica is like a moral line on the ice. And on one side of that line, we must fight. We must fight very hard. We must fight because we are all responsible for it. Nobody owns Antarctica. We all own it. And we need to fight very hard. And I know that it is possible and I know that we will do it. Now you must be wondering how does one save Antarctica and how does one make it not worth to somebody go out there and start doing drilling and excavation. The only way that you can save the last white wilderness is by using more renewable energy in our real world. By switching to alternative energies, by using biofuels, by saving more energy in our real lives. It is the road not taken and it is challenging. Each one of you would feel every single day disheartened by looking at the larger scheme of things. You'd be wondering, oh my God, is it really making a difference? What I do to the planet, what I do, what I, what I save, the carbon that I emit, does it really make a difference? But in the larger scheme of things, if we start keeping ourselves up to date, we engage, we measure, we set targets, we implement our solutions, and we report and monitor, Collectively, the compounding effect of our savings is not just satisfactory, it is miraculous. And if each one of us sitting in this room make this commitment of going green and of saving the planet, we will be creating a better world for the tomorrow. I have done my pitch and taken a stand for the environment. They say people with dreams become people with vision. I hope we can empower each other to carry out such vision. Because it isn't simply enough to just talk about it. One must believe in it. And it isn't even enough to just believe in it. One must work at it. Let us work at it. Together. Starting now. Thank you.